I'm going to, I just want to pray for a couple things. Um, I really felt like this week when I was, I was mowing the lawn here, actually, riding on the little zero-turn lawnmower, and God was speaking to me. And he's like, and Nathan, I bet you that there's people in the congregation right now that are listening to the messages of know your people that are actually struggling with the idea of knowing a core group of people. And I'm like, I'm talking like your close friends. Because for me, and I, I'm going to be very vulnerable in this, in this sermon because there's this topic when Andrew... <laughs> It's actually funny. He three weeks ago he's like, "Hey Nathan, I want you to preach when I'm gone at the coast on know your people." And I looked at him in the face and I was like, "You know, this is the hardest topic for me to preach on." And he's like, "Well, good. <laughs> it's a challenge for you." And the reason why it's so difficult is just because there's a lot of things that happen. Can you turn me down just a little bit more? There's a lot of things that happened in my life with people that are really close that were on my inner circle, even like my parents, that actually caused me to set up these boundaries and these walls with people that I didn't realize were there until I started struggling with a lot of things in my life and realized I need people in my life to get me through this. And so I actually want to take a moment, and I actually want to recognize and pray for people that are actually in that season right now where you're like, man, I am listening to everything Andrew is saying. It's all great. Everything's great. But I cannot, I have this big wall in front of me, this big barrier in front of me, and I cannot see past it. And actually, I can't connect with people. I can't be vulnerable with people. I can't open up to people and be honest with them about what's going on in my life because of things that have happened to me when I was younger or recently or whatever the case may be. So we're going to be vulnerable here. So if that's you, I'd like you to stand up. If there's anyone in, in here that feels that right now, I got one person back here. If there's anyone else right now, I want you to just give it a couple minutes. If it resonates with you at all. All right. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a lot of you. It's okay. If you don't feel like it's you, then great. I'm happy. <laughs> it's great stuff. But if there's somebody around you or you're, you're near somebody, will you just lay your hands on them? I think this is super important because this is actually everything we're talking about, knowing your people, is actually knowing your community and your people around you and knowing that you can trust and rely on them, right? So I'm going to pray, and I'm just going to say a simple prayer, and then we'll, we'll see what God does. So Jesus, um, I just I lift everyone up that's standing up right now. I lift them all up to you. I lift up their hurts, their pain their struggles of being able to connect with people, the wall, I just speak to those walls right now, and I just actually command them to fall. I command them to fall right now in Jesus' name. Those walls were put there because of safety, but they've actually become a barrier of connection, a barrier to connection. And God, I'm just praying right now that we can start to open up and start to be vulnerable with the people around us, the people that are in our inner circle, the people that we can trust, the people that we know love us and that see who you've called us to be. We just, I just pray that, that these people can actually start being open and honest with the struggles that they're walking through. Yeah, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. So, as I said um, this topic is actually a very touchy topic for me. And it's actually something I'm currently walking through with some people in my life of, of relationship, valuing relationship, valuing my inner circle so much, regardless of how hard it gets, regardless of the touchy situations, the touchy topics that we have to talk about. There's so much, so much things happened in my life. You know, I, I promise I'll, I'll speak some Bible verses to you guys too. But I, I think... I think examples are great. Um, when I walk through uh, my childhood and I, I go back and I look through it, I see a lot of things that happened with my parents that I actually saw uh, 
as I became a parent, um, I saw myself pick up tools that my parents gave me that I realized I didn't have until I became a parent. Sometimes when you uh, get put into stressful situations, the tools you were given come out. And you need people around you that know you and know your identity to call that out of you. Right? Think about this. One of the things that I struggle with the most is, and my wife will always call it out on me, is say, Nathan, you're so focused on the situation right now that you don't realize that you're hurting me. Meaning, we're in a conversation, and I'm so just like, I want to fix this. And she does, and I don't realize in the moment that my wanting to fix it is actually making it worse. Where I learned that from was my childhood and seeing my parents argue all the time. The greatest example, or well, let's go to the Bible, actually. Greatest Bible verse, Proverbs 22, 6, says that, that really hones in on this. says, train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he grows older, he will not abandon it. Think about it. There's things in, in that you do, reactions that you have, that you actually have from your childhood because you learned, from, learned it from your parents. There's times, you know, one of the other things that I, I learned from my parents is in a moment of rage, something gets thrown across the room. <laughs> it doesn't happen very often. But when I was younger, I would see a remote. I'd see whatever, a shoe, whatever, because it's just like, I'm trying to express my emotions right now, right? And so for me, it's, I have to recognize in those moments that I'm like, oh, I just want to throw something right now, <laughs> but I'm not going to <laughs> because I realize that this, this is a tool that I was given that I should not have. It's recognizing that tool, right? It's recognizing that the things that your parents taught you aren't always the best. The things you've picked up aren't always super great. There are a lot of things that my parents, that my parents did right. But when, when things got tough, I learned that the only way to get out of it is to run away from it or get angry about it. And so... Go back a little bit. My dad and my mom got a divorce, and when they got a divorce, my dad left. I was about 15, 16 years old. And so in that time for me, it was really, it was a really hard, it was really hard, as it probably should be. I didn't realize it at the time, but I didn't, I didn't realize how much it actually affected me becoming an adult. There's things that I, I didn't realize that, um, you know, my dad, my dad did that actually caused me to stumble later on in life that I picked up from him. Not that he's the one that caused it, but I picked up stuff from him that, that made, help, didn't help me heal from certain situations. And so the thing is, is my dad he only did what he knew to do, which was the tools that my grandparents gave him was what he used. Here's the thing, is that even though you're in, even though you recognize these tools and you feel like, I can't change, I can't change, you can change. You truly can. The thing that helps you change, the person that helps you change is actually, is the Holy Spirit. And, and he, the greatest thing, I think is, is when you're in a moment and the Holy Spirit, or when you're in a moment and you're, you're struggling, right? And uh, he, you're like, oh, I'm just so angry right now. And you realize that there's, there's something, something's not right in you. 
I'm sorry, I'm being very vulnerable right now. Just bear with me. <laughs> Something's not right in you. And you need to get help. And you realize, that's why I prayed for people, you realize, ah, I don't have people around me. See, people around you will call out the gold in you. Your close, intimate connections will be the ones that will see you through the struggle. Life is so much harder when you push people away. Here's the reality. I actually pushed people away for the longest time after my, my dad left. I felt like I was going to be rejected and abandoned from everyone else around me. And so the reality of my situation in my heart, in my mind, was that I can't get close to anybody because everybody's going to leave me. But it wasn't until I started allowing people to come in and actually be in that inner circle that actually healed me. It's the Holy Spirit in them that healed me. I, it, here's the thing, is that you can, for me, you can say all the churchy things to me, but it's really hard for me to, to see past my barriers sometimes. Even right now in the season I'm in, I'm just like, I just see this wall in front of me. I can't move past it right now. Because I am just so, so focused on this one thing, I can't get past it. But it's the people around me right now in my life that are like, hey, Nathan, I see the gold inside of you. I see everything that God has said to you, everything that's God's, that God has said to me about you. And I know he calls you a son. I know he calls you a daughter. I know he doesn't want you stuck. Right? So we need people to call out our blind spots, stuff we don't notice about ourselves, right? Like, when I'm in a moment of just, like, trying to fix things, I don't notice how I'm, like, responding in situations. When I'm really stressed out, I don't notice that I'm responding out of my stress to my wife and to everyone around me. I don't notice it until somebody tells me, hey, Nathan, wake up. <laughs> this isn't you. God has called you higher, so I'm going to pull you out of this pit and bring you higher. Right? All right. Proverbs 17, 17 says, A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for a time of adversity. Culture of honor is vital in a time of adversity. I'm going to be very, very vulnerable. Sorry, I wasn't. Good job on the, on the screens. <laughs> I didn't tell you to switch. Good job. Um, when, I, when Chloe and I first got married, we went through a very rough season in our marriage that actually tested people around us, I would think. They don't say it, but I would say that was probably very hard for them to walk through it with us. And the reality of it is, is that I was struggling with a lot of things that I thought would go away when I got married. How many of you did that? <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm gonna be honest with you, it doesn't go away. In fact, it probably gets worse. I mean, truthfully, I, I like, pornography was a huge struggle in my life and I was like, I just need to get married and it will all go away. Wrong, completely wrong. It actually intensified, but not only that, it actually started hurting valuable people in my life more. Not that it wasn't already, but it was, it became even more damaging. So when Chloe and I were walking through the season, um, we were, we had just gotten married, it was probably six months, and I was very... Um, I was unfaithful to her, and I, um, sh it was a really hard, hard season. I had to be vulnerable. I had to be honest. I had to open up my heart. I had to tell people in my life, hey, I'm struggling with this stuff. 
that I never want to talk about, but hey, I'm struggling with it. And and I had to tell people all of my all of my stuff. I love what James uh, five sixteen says. It says, um, "Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other, so that you may be healed." The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Come on. There's also you know Second uh, Corinthians six fourteen. It says, "Be equally yoked." Who in your inner circle are you willing to go tell when you're doing something that is so, so far out of your identity that won't leave you, that won't abandon you, and that will actually help you walk through this, the season and the process that you're going through? The thing is, is I, at that time, that's when I started coming out of this Oh, I have no friends, I have no friends, and then boom, I have a lot of friends that all care for me and love me and know who I am. And so I actually had to go through this process of like, oh my goodness, I have to tell people that I'm struggling and I'm Christian. <laughs> I can't struggle. <laughs> That's not true though. I feel like there's this often lie of like, oh, you're Christian, you're perfect. Everything's great, right? And sometimes we actually take that and we actually believe it ourselves. And it actually stops us from being vulnerable and honest with people because we're like, no, nothing's wrong, I'm okay. Right? And so I would, I had to open up and be like, with my closest friends, I, it was a very small like they were like close friends. Like stuff like this, I want to I want to be I want to be very clear. When you are walking through something super difficult that is like really really tough, like end of the almost like end of the world. Nothing's end of the world, but it feels like it's the end of the world tough. You need to make sure that your community around you is only lifting you up and walking you through the process being honest with you, which sometimes feels like it's not lifting you up, but being honest to the point where it hurts because it's true. And so when I was walking through this season with my, it was like maybe two or three people, I didn't tell my mom, I didn't tell my dad, I didn't tell no one, I didn't tell my brother because I knew that they wouldn't be able to deal with with what we were talking about, what we were walking through. And so there was, yeah, like two or three people that I told that I was just like, you're the only ones that I will talk to because you are the only ones that I trust to actually call me higher in this situation and call out the gold because I don't see it. All I see is dirt. All I see is what I did, how I messed up. I can't see past it, but the people in my life could. And so, yeah, we walked through this really tough season, and I know who, it, who God called me to be. I know who, who he called me to be as a husband, as a father, as a son. I knew, I knew it all, but I couldn't see past the things that I was struggling with. I couldn't see past my own insecurities my own wall that I put up in front of myself and everyone else because I was so afraid of what the world would tell, would say about me. It was love and support that gave, that gave us hope. I feel like in times of, of struggle, in times of pain and hurt and everything like that, you have, sometimes you have to borrow some hope. Sometimes you just have to look at somebody else and be like, I don't know why you're so hopeful. <laughs> right? I love your enthusiasm. I don't got it. <laughs> I mean...
borrow someone's hope. Don't be afraid to be like, I don't see it, but you do, so I'm just going to listen to you and hope that you're right. <laughs> right? I mean, like, really, like, the, the two people that really walked us through it at the time were Andrew and Stephanie, and, and p- half the time we were living with them. So, like, there was, like, this, like, <laughs> time where it was, like, I just didn't ever not know that it was there. Like, everyone knew, everyone that I was with, really close with, all knew. There's no way I couldn't avoid it. I couldn't avoid the situation. I had to talk about it. But the thing is, is that there was also this thing inside of me that said, I don't want to be here in 10 years struggling with the same thing. And so there's also that thing inside of you. I'm sorry. This, I'm really, I was going to say this at the beginning, but I'm really good at taking a sermon and turning it into an identity sermon or like something like that, right? So this, I want to tell you my title of this sermon. It's the value of knowing your people. Everything I am saying, it, we're talking about knowing your people, but it's all about the value of knowing your people. And I'm talking about your inner circle people, like your close friends, your family, like people you trust kind of in a circle. So if you want to put that at the top, you can. So now I lost my place. I shouldn't have done that. Oh, no. (laughs) Huh? Borrowing hope. There we go. (laughs) So, yeah, so you have to borrow hope from someone. Like, yeah, like, it's like you can't do it alone. Sometimes you can't see past the filth, but others can. Like, it's like when your windshield gets all dirty and it's like you're trying to wipe it off and, like, your friend sticks the head out the window and says, you're good. Turn right. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's never happened before, just saying. <laughs> Though, I did have a friend that had no windshield wipers, and I had to stick my hand out the window and go like this with it. <laughs> it's not safe. Not safe. So, sometimes we need friends that are like, you're good. I can see for you. I can see for you. And these are the people you want to trust. You don't just want to have a random person come up to you and, you know, know everything that you're going through and be like, why didn't you tell me? Or, or um, this is what I think you should do. It's like, I love you and I care that you care. But I, I really need the people in my life that I trust fully to give me an opinion right now. And I love your opinion, and I'll take it up with God. And I'll ask the Holy Spirit what he thinks about it. Right? Because, like, you don't want to shut every opinion out. You want to take it to the Holy Spirit and be like, hey, Holy Spirit, what, is, what do you say about this? Is this true? One of my greatest examples is me and my brother. You know, siblings, they always get together and they can easily dig. And me and my brother, you know, I didn't tell him for the longest time anything that ever happened in uh, my life, you know, with sexuality or anything like that, you know, pornography, anything. And he, uh, I told him one time everything that Chloe and I walked through, and he was like, well, you shouldn't have done that. That was stupid. And the thing is, is I do the same thing to him. Like, he comes to me, and I say the same thing. It's, we're brothers, and I'm, I'm learning, and I'm growing. But you don't want everybody to know, and you don't want everybody's opinion. Because if I wasn't already healed from what had happened, if Chloe and I didn't walk through that healing process before I told him, his opinion probably would have sent me over the edge. Eventually, people can know. That's why I can stand up here and be honest with people and be vulnerable and be like, I struggled with all of this stuff. Because even if you, no offense, right? Even if you come up to me and say something, 
it doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to take it to heart. Because I've already walked through the healing process with, with God, with Holy Spirit, with my wife. And I'm free from it. Right? My, I got a few minutes left, but my, like, I, I didn't get healing until I was open and honest with people. I, even when I started being open and honest up here before Chloe and I moved down to Reading, I really didn't start getting the full healing until I was in a community of people that actually saw, they didn't even know me during the, pro, like, the time that was, that was going on, but I was open and honest with them, and I said, look, this is what I struggle with because there was an environment for me to be open and honest and step into it. There was safety. Everybody in the room wanted freedom. This is the great thing about being equally yoked is a yoke is a, a tool that farmers use for, for um, like cows and cattle to plow a field. It's a thing that goes, goes on their back, and they pull a plow, or they pull some kind of, like, instrument to do something. I'm not a farmer at all. <laughs> all I know is what a yoke is, all right? So the thing is, is that if you are in a community of people that are going after the same thing, that's being equally yoked. It doesn't matter anything else. Look, everyone in here, I am convinced, is going after Jesus, right? We are all going after the one thing. When we step in this room, we are all going after him. When I am with my core group of people, I am go we have one thing. We're going after Jesus together. This is why being equally yoked is so important because you can't go different directions when you're yoked together with someone. It's like the other person is like slowing you down. It's like, I'm going after Jesus right now. And the other person's like, eh, I don't really want to. I'm tired. I want to go to bed. Right? And then you're like, but let's go. Let's go. That's why being equally yoked is so important is because you can't do it alone. You can't do it without people that are going the same direction as you. Me and my wife, when we got married, our, one of our vows was that we will keep God at the center of everything we do. Every decision we make, we will keep him at the center. Because we want to go after everything he has for our marriage and for our family. We want to go after him and him only. So it's this sermon's really a testimony also. I don't know if any of you know but I have two children now. <laughs> I just want to encourage you. I don't want to, you know, load every uh, unload everything and then walk away but I also want to encourage you that when you allow people to come in you actually can get freedom but you have to let people in I bet you too that if you're not letting people in you're also not letting God in so once you open up yourself to people you'll probably open up yourself to God as long as those people around you are encouraging it So I just want to encourage anybody that's walking through problems or just things that you just are like, I don't, ha I don't know what to do. I don't know who to talk to. There are people in this church that want to talk to you. I want to talk to you. Here's the reality. I believe that everyone can be free. No matter what you're walking through, no matter what you're going through, I believe that you can be free. All right, go ahead and stand with me. I'm going to pray um, real quick, and then Cheryl will come up. Can I get the prayer team to start to come forward? And, yeah. Holy Spirit, I just ask that you, you start to speak to hearts. You start revealing to hearts whatever it is that, that people need right now in their community. 
that we start communicating to the people that we love, the people that we trust, that, hey, I need you, I need you, I need you, I need you. We start opening ourselves up to everyone around us that, that we feel safe with. In Jesus' name, amen. All right.